What is event sourcing? Well, it's a different way of storing data than you're probably used to. I'll explain the differences and show an implementation using a console app that has no external dependencies to show how this works. So to illustrate this, what I'm gonna do is talk about a little bit of how, how most apps store data and that they store current state. So if I'm looking at a relational database as a table, but you could think of this, if you're using a document store, you could think of an, a particular document that you have, because this really is the same thing of changing the properties on that document and then storing it. So if we think about a table and I have a new record that I'm gonna enter. So in the context of what I'm using here, my example and code that I'm gonna show, is I'm talking about a product in a warehouse. So let's say we received a new product in the warehouse. And this is ABC, one, two, three is the SKU. And we've received 10 quantity of that product. And we last received it today, which is 2020-01-29. And then we'll leave last shipped null. So that was the first thing that happened is we've created this record. We inserted this record. Then let's say we receive another five into the warehouse. So something occurs within our system and our system then makes an update statement saying, okay, add five. So now we have 15 and our last receive, let's say it's the same day. still, so that's not changing. Now we've shipped an order of say six uh, quantity of that item, which we now need to reduce this quantity. So let's go to nine. And then there's other things that happen in our system. Like let's say we do, there's a things that people do in warehouses called stock counts where they go and recount the quantity that they, we think we have on hand. And let's say magically we found another 50 quantity of this particular product hidden away somewhere. So now we have 59. So this is how most applications maintain state uh, or in, in save their data is to record current state. You're keeping track of current state. Yes, you may make log files or log entries um, in other places about the actions that have occurred, uh, but fundamentally your point of truth is this table or this document about what the quantity is on hand that you have. So the difference with event sourcing is you're going to be recording events as your point of truth rather than current state. And this means that you can use events to derive to current state or really any point in time. So if we look back at what I just did to get to current state in our relational or document store is I had a product was received with a quantity of 10 on say today. And then I had another product received of five with the same date. We shipped six out on the same date. And then we did an inventory adjustment. Um, so our product was adjusted and with a quantity of 50 and our reason was because we magically found some. Now this storing this is fundamentally different than storing current state because with current state, we don't know how we got to that 59 number of quantity on hand. With event sourcing, because you're recording the facts of things that have occurred, again, events are facts. They're, they're things that have happened within the system, not that they're going to, that they did happen. So hence these are named in the past tense. That's why they're events is we received, received, shipped, and then we adjusted. So that's the fundamentally the difference is that we can get to current state with our events and we're not really losing any information that may be important to you about the number of products that you received at a particular time. Maybe you have this data elsewhere in your system, but again, you can't with this, you can rebuild current state in our relational model, you don't really necessarily know how you got there or have a way of rebuilding using other data, how you got to a particular point. So you may be thinking, well, what's the difference between event sourcing and like a transaction log that my database just has by default. And there fundamentally is a difference is that your transaction log shows you the state transitions, but not why they occurred. So if you can see that, oh, there was an update statement to this particular product where it changed it it incremented it by five or set it to 15. That doesn't tell you why that happened. Was the product received? Did you do an inventory adjustment? What, why did that change? You don't really know why. Events besides containing the data of the state transition, the name of them in and of themselves and other metadata that you add to it really provides additional details about what occurred in the system. All right, so the last thing I want to touch on before I jump into some code, because my code uses this, is to talk about streams and how you're storing these things. Is that events are going to be stored per aggregate and unique identifier of that aggregate, generally by the aggregate root. So in my case, my aggregate is simply a product 
which is also the aggregate root. So you're gonna have streams per unique aggregate, in my case, a product, and its unique uh, identifier or way we're identifying it is by a SKU. So that means I'm gonna have a stream for everything that occurs with product SKU ABC123, it's gonna have a stream of events. And for example, say we have YYZ897, this is a separate product, it's gonna have its own stream of events. So again, stream per aggregate. All right, so the first thing I've done and created here are three new records, which are in new in C Sharp. So I have a record that represents an event for product shipped, product received, and the inventory adjusted. So we looked at these events. This is how I'm defining them. I just also defined just kind of an empty interface. You'll see this here in a minute why I'm using this of I event, just to indicate that that's what these are. These are events. The properties are all the data that I actually want to record with the event. So I want to know, okay, a product, a product was shipped. What was the product? So I'm recording the SKU, the quantity, and when it occurred. The only difference between product shipped and, and received and inventory adjusted is I'm also recording just the string reason, just kind of explain why uh, an inventory adjustment might occur. This may be some other um, variable or like an enum or some other identifier that, for a list of reasons that you may have. But for example's sake here, I just wanted to add in another property. So I've defined all my events. All right, so for my example, I didn't want to use any dependencies or have to use a database to illustrate this. So I just wanted to use something in memory. So I'm just using basically a list, a dictionary and a list. So this is my warehouse product repository. Um, I have two methods on it, which if you've seen my video about aggregate roots and persisting them, I mentioned just get and save, and here's an example. So I have a get method where I'm passing in just a string that represents the SKU, the identifier of the product. And I'm gonna be creating a new instance of this warehouse product. We'll be looking at that next. Um, and what I'm doing here is I just have this in memory streams, which is really just a list. Uh, it's actually a dictionary that contains a list of those I events, all the events that we mentioned. So what I have here is when you call get, I'm creating a new instance of our warehouse product, which we'll look at. I'm checking to see if our dictionary has that particular SKU. If it does, it's gonna iterate over all this list for that particular SKU and then call add event in the warehouse product. And then we just return this warehouse product, which we'll look at here. And then save is just basically overwriting that list, which this returns within that dictionary for that SKU. So this is just kind of my BS implementation for actually storage. This behind the scenes, it's actual implementation. If you're really doing something, would be dependent on using the API for the library or database that you're using. Okay, here is the warehouse product. This is what our repository is returning. This is where all the real stuff happens, all the magic happens. So this is our aggregate and our aggregate root. And what we wanna have here is this contain all of our behaviors, because our behavior methods or we're actually going to do two things. One, they're gonna contain our business logic on whether an action can actually occur or a command. And then two, if a command is successful, meaning we've passed any business validation rules, that's where we're saying, okay, that's good to go. Let's create an event to saying this actually occurred. So in my warehouse product, we kind of mentioned there were really three events that we've created. So we need corresponding methods to make those events occur. So I have a ship product. So again, this is the action, this is the command where I'm saying, okay, here's the quantity. And I have one business rule that I made up here saying that if the quantity that you're requesting is more than the quantity that we have on hand, and I'll get to this variable here in a second, we're going to throw a domain exception. But if we're good, if we have enough quantity on hand, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna call add event and we are going to create this new record that I created called product shipped passing the relevant data. So the same thing for product received. There's really no logic around it. We're just gonna add an event. Inventory adjusted, what I've done is kind of the same type of logic saying, okay, based off what you're adjusting, we can't go into a negative quantity on hand. So that's some validation that I have and then throw a domain exception and then add event. So what does this add event do? Let's first take a look at that. So what add event does is we basically look at the I event that we're passing in, whatever event it was, 
And I just have a switch statement here. You can do some reflection magic to do this, but for simplicity's sake, I'm just using a switch statement. And I'm saying, okay, if this event is a product shipped event, then I'm gonna call this corresponding apply method. What the apply method I have, so I have an apply method for each different type of event that we've have here. And what I'm doing with it is I have this current state property that really just has, um, this is a member that has one property on it called quantity on hand. So when we've shipped something, I want to remove the quantity from the quantity on hand that we actually just shipped. If we've received product, then I want to add that to the quantity on hand of our current state. And if we've done an inventory adjustment, I'm going to add that as well. And if it's a negative number, so be it, that will work too. So we have corresponding apply methods for each different event that we're adding. So our add event, we do a switch over that. And then what we're doing now is we are adding that to this events list that we have a part of this warehouse product. And the reason we're doing this is because later our repository, when you've seen that save method, we have a method to get this list out. So when our repository needs to save all of the new events that have occurred, it can basically um, just get this list out that I have a method for called get events, and this will just return the event. So if I look back at the repository again, scroll down, you can see I have this get events method. That's just giving me all the back of the events so that we could save it a part of this dictionary. So the reason why we have current state and why we're storing current state here is because we need to do this validation logic. That means that when we build up this warehouse product, if we look at the repository, now this may start to make sense, is we're iterating through all the events that were previously saved, right? So we're going through all the events, we're calling add event on all of them. So from index zero, the very first event, we're calling add event, which is basically gonna call the apply method. And our, at that point, our state is zero. We have no product quantity on hand. So we call, for example, in ours, we received, so we're gonna to add to our quantity on hand. And then each event is gonna replay, essentially, to get to, once we finish replaying all the events, we're at our current state. So at that point, once we've built up our current state through this, and we return our warehouse product, anything that's using this can call our new methods that are gonna generate new events, and those be appended to our stream, basically. So just to clarify as well is that our current state, the this particular property, this is just in memory. It's just used for our warehouse product so that it can do its its logic, its valid business logic, its validation. And it's not stored anywhere. The other thing too is that this current state is what's called a projection. I'll get into other videos about projections in future videos. So if you're not subscribed already, subscribe so you can see some of those videos. All right, so we've created our aggregate, which is our warehouse product. It generates events where we have a repository to build out that warehouse product, to replay all the, the events, and then we also have the ability to save um, all the events that have occurred. So how do we use this thing? So I created a little console app here um, in .NET, and so I'm creating a new product repository, and then just in the console, depending on what key you enter, if you enter R, we'll do a, a receive inventory, ship inventory, um, the, the adjustment, and then I have the ability to show what the quantity on hand is, and E just to list out the events. So the important part here is that I'm just I'm going to get from the console, so you can type it in just what the SKU is that you're working on, because again, our SKU is the identifier per stream. So because of that, I'm going to use the repository to get out the warehouse product for that SKU that you enter. So once we have our warehouse product, I'm going to then get what action do you want to take here? So do you want to receive, ship, do a product adjustment? So if you do a receive that you've received product, we'll get what the quantity is from input from the console. And then we're going to call the receive product method and just pass in that quantity. Same thing for shipping a product. It's pretty much the exact same thing, but we're calling ship product on our warehouse product. If we do an inventory adjustment, I'm just going to get it. So the console, you got to type in some string for the reason and then we'll be doing a uh, inventory, uh, adjust inventory, we'll be calling that method. And then for a quantity, what I've done is I've added a method that gives us back quantity on hand. So this is giving us back that projection of current state and what we're using with our logic. So I have that, 
And then lastly, if we want to print out the list of events that have occurred, I am using the get events on our warehouse product, which is also what the repository uses to show all to, to save all the events. And I'm just going to iterate over them and just print them out data about, okay, if it's shipped, received or adjusted, just a different console write line for each one. And then after that has occurred, I'm going to save our warehouse product. And again, remember our warehouse product, we're passing that into save. So we can call get events and just save it to our in memory dictionary, that list. All right, so I'm running it now and I'm going to do the exact same flow that I started this video with. So I'm going to call receive inventory and we're going to do ABC123 is the SKU and we're going to receive 10 quantity. So there's the print line. I'm going to do another receive of ABC123 and we're going to receive five. So at this point, we know if I look at the quantity on hand, we know we should be at 15. So if I do Q for ABC123, yes, we get back 15. So when I did that, again, we went back to the repository, got all the events, replayed all of them to get back to current state, which is 15. Then we did a, oh, actually I did a ship actually at that point. So we shipped some inventory ABC123 of six. So that got us back to a quantity of nine. There it is. And then we did an inventory adjustment. So I'll do A, A, B, C, one, two, three. And we magically found somehow 50 products in the warehouse. So we magically found these. So we've added 50. So now we should be at 59, which we are. And if we look at the list of events for ABC one, two, three, we can receive, we can see that our events list is we receive five, 10, receive five, ship six, and then we adjust it to 50. Just like I was explaining at the very beginning where we're using event events as our way to store our data. We're not storing current state. We're, we're storing all the events, the facts that got us to where we are now. Event sourcing is a big topic, but I hope this video has added some clarity about what it actually is. I realize I haven't covered real why you might want to use it or where you might want to use it. And I can explain some of those in some future videos. And there's other topics, like I mentioned, um, in regards to pro what projections are, how you use these for your views and your UI, which are what projections are for, concurrency, versioning. There's a pile of topics out there related to event sourcing that I can cover. So make sure to subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. To all my Code Opinion members, you'll be getting access to this source code of this demo that you can play around with and the slides. If you want access to source code and you're not a member, click the join button for more details. Thanks.